What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with something a little bit different, man. Today we are going to be reacting to Detroit Lions training camp highlights. Now, I got this idea from my man Boss over there, Bossaroskis, I think how you say his actual YouTube name. He does some Packers content. That's my guy. Shout out to him. I saw him doing videos like this. So, I kind of had this idea already in my head. I was like, "Man, that's that's kind of a cool idea." And then on top of that, today, scrolling through Instagram, and I see an Amon Ross St. Brown highlight from training camp, one of their one-on-one -on -one drills. And I remember seeing the play because I had it in one of our notes. I think it was from the last practice specifically. So I had noted it down. But when you get to see like a different angle than us just sitting in the stands, you get to really see like the detail. You could slow it down. And you're like, man, there's a lot of nuance to that route that I didn't really see. I mean, I see the result like, ooh, contested grab. That's awesome. Sometimes you get to see little things within the route, but it happens so fast. Like in the one-on-one -on -one drills, for example, they alternate. So one side you'll get wide receiver DB. And as soon as like the result happens, the next side goes. So if you're taking a note and you look down the next rep is already underway so like things happen fast they get through these drills fast I mean it's like three four minutes and boom they're done they're moving on so these things happen very quickly which can make it difficult especially if you're looking for the details of things so I think this is a really cool way to maybe get some more insight on this I know like a lot of you have probably seen these clips already maybe I can give some insight on like something that I noticed on some of these plays maybe I can't maybe I'm just react to it and that's cool too I'm looking forward to it I haven't watched or tuned into a ton of these highlights because we usually happen is I watch it, I take my notes, come back, do the video, edit it, upload it, and then I go to bed. I haven't seen like the the full like you know they the last one was like 36 seconds where they put together like highlights from just the day specifically. I haven't seen that for August 5th, which was the last practice yesterday, and we talked about that yesterday. If you guys want to check that out, I haven't seen like a specific video for that, but there's multiple clips from that day that the Lions posted on Twitter. So I was like, you know what, or X. So I was like, you know what, we can react to some of these, and I can even go back a little bit. Like we could go back to the practice before, which was August 3rd and take a look at those i was at that practice as well we'll spot ourselves in the background i mean that'd be kind of cool that's happened before maybe that happens again i don't know but i did see that play from st brown so we'll definitely look at that one just look at some of these plays some of these i haven't seen now this play i have seen because this is i wanted to test and see what it looked like on the screen here and i think it's a good starting point you know i love the slow motion those things always look good uh we got a nice little throw here from sudfeld you see kaminsky rushing i can't tell who the lineman is it almost looks like by the build i'm not going to take too much time it almost looks like a source though kind of build you know the haircut maybe it's a stenberg i don't know who that is regardless though um and who was that coming in there 20 was that 27 yeah that's chase lucas blitzing through there it looks like on this play so this seemed to be a team drill you know they are on the other field i'm sorry i'm like wait a minute because team drills wasn't on this side in last practice so they're on the flip side you can see the field in between i think they're on the opposite side here so yeah we're good to go this is team drills it looks like and this is dylan drummond's touchdown so you know john kaminsky's out there um but yeah Dylan Drummond, and this play is on Savion Smith. So that means, you know, it's kind of like the second team defense, I'm assuming, on this play. And this is kind of what Dylan Drummond, and it gets blurry on me, of course. But this is kind of what you've noticed with Dylan Drummond. Now, I thought there was a great battle we touched on it yesterday between him and Brian Branch. And Branch, you know, made a couple plays on him in the last practice, had the interception, had the pass breakup. But I think what's really stood out about Dylan Drummond's success is that he's had it in terms of he's just not catching the ball in team drills, he's scoring touchdowns. When he's getting the ball, He's getting them inside the 10. He's scoring touchdowns. He's putting points on the board, though it's practice. It's the contested grab there. Uh, you like the strong hands through traffic. It looks like, yeah, Sa I mean, Savion's long, too. Like, if you see Savion, he's a very long player. He's tough at the catch point because because of that length. You can see there's some separation clearly created here. Tries to get his hand in. I love how fast he gets that thing to his body. Now, it's, it slides a little bit, gets that second hand on there. And, I, again, you see, like, he's in the end zone clearly on that play, so that would be a touchdown. Dylan Drummond's had a, had a good camp. I think everybody's kind of pointed that out. So, you know, I'm not really saying something new here, but, you know, that's, I think, what a lot of people have noticed on Instagram from Amon Ross St. Brown. And this is what I was like, ooh, we should do this. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at this one. By the way, yeah, I'll point that out a little bit later. Either way, let's take a look at this clip. So I'll show it one, one time fast. This is St. Brown on Cam Sutton. I know the number one. If it throws you off, it threw me off a lot at the first practice. I kept thinking that was Jeff Okuda. It's not Jeff Okuda. It's Cam Sutton. Uh, but anyways here, like, it was the nuance of the route that stuck out to me that I can't really see, especially when they're on the flip side. But in this case, I think they were right in front of us. I think they were, yeah. They usually do the wide receiver DB drills right in front of this part of the of the stands, and we were in, like, the corner here. But it's the nuance that you don't always get to notice. Like, sometimes you'll see it, but things happen fast. I think the big thing is there, the timing between the two. And, and the way I kind of view it is like this. Like, for example, you get some of these routes that, you know, it's not as simple as, like, okay, he's going to run 
run of the spot, he's going to break, and then the ball's got to be there. Like, there's little nuance that's always added to the route. So I think it's kind of the feel that golf has had, and this is why there's so much success when he's thrown that way. You talk about chemistry, because it seems to be like there's this feel like, okay, when he does plant and break, and when I let go of this ball, I know how fast he's going to shoot out of there based on the distance. Like, there's a really good feel of it, it seems, between these two. I think this is a great example of chemistry these next two plays will take a look at here. But then also just the route running for St. Brown has just been pretty nasty, and you can see it by some of these things. Like, the way that right here, he looks back inside. Like, here, he's kind of given, like, a fade look, it almost seems like. And then for him to just dive down like that, come on, man. Because it does. It looks like a fade, right? Turning back, kind of lift up a little bit. You get Cam Sutton to lift up. You can see on the play a little bit. See how he kind of stands up in his stance right here. Gets him to stand up. And then, you know, slam down, you know, chin and knees, basically. Break back outside. Now, give credit to Cam Sutton. Like, he was, he was still with this play. He stood up a little bit. He was able to get back in this play. Got in that inside hip. And then it's kind of just the late, like, movement that St. Brown has. The strong hands in traffic playing through the, the – push him out of – look at my coach. And, hey, who's that in the back? I don't even know who that is. He's loving it. The strong hands, man, fighting through the contact. Look at the toes. Get the toe down. Oh, my goodness. Like, that's just absolutely nasty. And then the big thing there, though, again, is look at the timing on this throw, right? Like, there's the ball placement is crazy here when he's letting go of this thing. So, it's like he lets go as he actually is going into that break after the little kind of lift at the top of the route. So he's letting go there, and where the ball is placed, like, Cam Sutton's in a spot you would think he could get to the ball, but he actually can't. How he kind of, like, drives back in front of him. It's like he can't use that inside. He can't use his right arm, so he kind of, like, leans to that left arm to try to get a little more length there. And then St. Brown almost kind of, like, bodies him off, like, walls him off a little bit. He can't get through it, and the ball is just money like the timing between those two is outstanding and even cooler it was again st brown from golf uh and also if you notice that tendon hooker standing there in the background so you know just so you know i had to point that out because i didn't notice that for a lot of practice i just didn't even know he was out there that tendon hooker in the back there in the blue he was running around as as pointed out like he's wearing that knee brace but he's been running around so that stuff is great but how about this one so here he's working on the rookie brian branch i think there's some good on both sides that i that i noticed like when i quickly just look at this you know again so let's kind of pull it back a little bit here you can see as he like stabs back inside Brian Branch's balance is, is is big time. Like he doesn't he doesn't bite on anything. He's not biting on these fakes. Super disciplined watching the hips. Look how disciplined he is watching him. Footwork, he's not lunging, nothing like that. Now what stands out to me here a little bit here is how St. Brown pushes up on Brian Branch and you'll see him get a little bit flat footed and you'll see him kind of lift a little bit before him to kind of open up in that hop. So it slightly kind of delays that transition. So as St. Brown kind of slows and kind of deadens his route and Brian Branch starts to lift a little bit, then when he takes back off, now we can almost create some of that leverage as he's kind of working through with his hands. That way he's not getting, you know, halted right there through that transition. Like his hands are ready. So as he kind of comes out of that, he's got ready hands attempts to break there at the wrist a little bit patience you can see on this rep and, and you know and then st brown kind of like rings that out a little bit before he gets straight up vertical right here which i think is what makes this route so difficult for brian to cover on this play because he doesn't fade out of the route like he gets back in vertical so it's like as brian branch is transitioning with this he's not completely flipping and opening he's staying in that hip but st brown ready hands breaks at the wrist there he's able to kind of push off but then look He's able to get vertical on him. Like, he works. He's got half the man now. Look at him drive upfield, and you can see, like, hey, Brian Branch using that right hand a little bit to kind of stick with him, which I think slows down the way that St. Brown gets out of this break. And, again, there was no flags that were being called. Not to say that this would have been a flag, but there wasn't. The thing here is, again, okay, the timing. Goff's letting go as he's rolling out of that break. So the timing of the pass to kind of feel where he's going to be. But the big thing to me here is, right, he's getting pulled back to the back of the end zone. He's putting that, like, right to the pylon. So he's rolling back to the, to the corner of the end zone. But for him to make that late adjustment right there back to the football like the way that he kind of rounds at the top here so he's like rolling to the pylon ball's already out and then he like right here boom jump right back to the football like cut off brian branch at the catch point there and he makes a ridiculous grab on this play because brian branch right now is in trail and i know dan campbell talked about like he doesn't panic so here you go you see he's not panicking he's kind of face guarding this rolling it to the pylon but then as soon as he makes that move to make to get back to the ball brian branch then seems to kind of like feel that and he's like let me get my eyes back to the football here but then it's like you know just in incredible ball skills for st brown contested like that the way he like saves this thing i mean it was contested extremely well but for him to save that get his feet down make that completion is just disgusting he's just dis he's disgusting but shout out to the patience there from brian branch i mean you got hey didn't lunge nothing like that I have julian okora's pick here okay now this is a sh very short clip so there's not a ton of 
to look at necessarily here. That's understandable that they don't want to show a ton of stuff here. You can see we got 49. That's, Sterl that's Starling Thomas who's dropping off. It looks like his route as it goes vertical. Number six would be Iffy the safety. So he's driving down on this. Uh, you got to... You got to like that, that Starling's in a position here where it looks like he's playing it under the zone as his man kind of drove vertical. Like, he would be in a really good position there to make the play because underneath zone, you have Julian who's just jumping this route. So, I like that Starling's in that position right there. And then you can see some of the, who's the big guys in there? Josh Pascal over here on the edge. Seeing this, like, this angle is way better because when I saw it, I didn't really know. You can see, like, it looks like Drummond is breaking out, and he was probably aligned on this side of the field. I think he was aligned, like, maybe on the right slot. So for him to make this outbreaking route and Julian to undercut it, kind of feel that, reading the quarterback's eye specifically on this play, it looks like. The big thing to me is here, when I saw him, when I from what I could see, he just dropped, and it almost it felt like he threw it right at him. But he's actually, like, matching this through the quarterback's eyes. And look at the athleticism, man. To kind of look at the ball. Oh, my gosh. Hey, there was a little bobble there. There's a little bobble. The concentration. The concentration for the big man. Look at that. And then, see, that's what I was saying. Like, he was taking that thing to the house. My man put a stiff arm on, dude. Oh, my. I could say, I guess, the ball could be a little bit behind there. But Starling Thomas diving down, like, you have to hit that window. If you're throwing that underneath in a zone, like, that's a tight window to hit into. And the fact that Julian, you know, like, Julian's not just sitting in his, he's not spotting in his zone here. It looks like he's dropping into his zone. He's not just spotting into it. Like, he's rolling with it. So, if you're looking, if you're Sudfeld, and I can't see exactly where he's looking, but if you're Sudfeld and you see that corner, you can't lead him into Starling Thomas and get him just blown up. So, if you're going to throw that pass, you kind of have to throw it, like, put it on him. Almost sit down in zone. But because Julian, like, undercuts and runs with it, uh, it's, it's a situation where when the ball comes out, like, there's not really a spot for him to sit down because Julian stuck with the route, read the eyes, that kind of thing. So there really wasn't a spot to sit down in zone coverage. That was just nice from two defenders working together there. And you love that if he's all over that as well. Who's that with his hand up in the air? That's Jerry Jacobs, of course. He sees it. The, oh, this the they got the Brian Prejudice. Okay, wait, hold up. Wow. Okay, I didn't see. Look, I didn't even know it was that contested. I had bad memory of this one. I didn't think it was even contested. I remember him leaping. I didn't remember like it being that close to the receiver though. And from what I'm seeing, this may have been some form of man coverage because I kind of had the thought, like, originally I was like, oh, that had to be zone. I was thinking this might be man coverage and one of those things where he's kind of playing through the eyes uh, of the receiver a little bit because you can see Campbell. It looks like that's – that's not Campbell. Yeah, that is Campbell. That is Campbell. You can see Campbell leaking out there running with the – it looks like the tight end on the play. And it looks like here we have – was that Kirby Joseph? Kirby Joseph picking up, you know, uh, Maurice Alexander, probably running deep through the slot there. So it may have been just one of those things where, again, like, okay, so you have C.J. Gardner-Johnson over top on this play. So he was going to probably pass it off there. It may have been one of those things where he kind of dropped it off because from what I could tell, I, was like, I couldn't tell if that was man, if it was, like, off man, if that was, like, zone. Uh, but it looks almost like he may have just kind of dropped it off because he had that help over top. And he just stepped down and undercut this route. Like, that's kind of the vision I get here, the vision on the quarterback to do that. And then again, the ball skills. Like, look at that, catching traffic, quick tuck, take that down. And a quick note too, right, with Ryan Branch, if he continues to play well in coverage and the assignments are sound, we've already seen the blitz success. And then, of course, when you talk about tackling, it's where I gave the highest grade. So I think that's going to translate for sure. There is a real competition, I think, then at the safety position with the CJ and the T-Walk for reps because it's one of these things where – you want to get this dude on the field. And if you just have playmakers like this that you can trust early, like Aaron Glenn said in the past, not afraid to put the young guys out there. And CJ, hey, you want to know about CJ's energy? This is exactly what he looks like all the time. That dude is fired up. We know Kirby's got it too. Kirby's got it too out there. Okay. And his defense just said, you know what? We're going to end this thing twice. And then they just continued because it was a second team offense and they just kind of finished the situation. But to end it, it was like back-to-back -back interceptions. And then they scored the touchdown. Then they got the ball back and the defense ended it with a sack. Now, this one, ooh, I wish I had a better view of this. So, yeah, this was over Jack Campbell. Campbell's a little bit closer than I maybe originally thought. That was Laporta. Yeah, he's just getting behind Jack Campbell on this play. You can see it looks like good pass pro here. Certain players are mixing in. So, you see Aleem's out there. Pascal's mixing in. I've seen him get first string reps, so that's very possible. Campbell's gotten first string reps with uh, Alex Angeloni. But you can see Alex is off to the sideline here. So, it looks like a little bit of a mix here. Um, oh, my gosh. And, and this is the thing, like I was saying. I love the toe tap there. The timing, like there was some decisiveness within Golf's throws. Now, credit to the holes that they were creating, the windows that they were creating. Um, but but for him, like when he got into that rhythm, it was it felt like there was a real rhythm within his passes where things were coming out like this. Like they weren't lofting, they were hitting windows. And there was really good timing on these throws. This one is just in a perfect spot. But give 
give credit to the pass pro. I mean, you see the pocket that's created right here. Obviously, this is the first string offensive lineman. The pocket's great. This wasn't, I don't remember this being a long developing play, so this seemed to get out open pretty quickly. Got behind Jack Campbell. I don't think Jack was manned up on this one. It could have been a situation like uh, the one before where, you know, Jack's underneath and maybe there's a safety over top and he has ended up getting leverage out of it. I would assume this was more just kind of zone. And it looks like here at the bottom, we have Jalen Reese Maben actually here popping up on the bottom. So this is Jack Campbell. And then we also had Jalen, who's probably working into the flat. It looks like, yeah, so David Montgomery was probably rolling into the flat, which I'm assuming pulled down, which I'm assuming probably pulled down Jalen. And uh, it opened up that zone hole. So you had a guy like Jack trying to drop and get depth. The Lions were having some success offensively attacking like the high low look. So that's very possible. I do like your Jack Campbell using that inside arm. You can just see the length that he's going to have, which is going to be difficult middle field. But that inside arm just creating even more length. And that makes tight passing windows. Like if a safety is in there, it's going to be a very tough spot to hit. Bro, that was cool to see for Laporta because he had a great day. And he's been showing us what he could do underneath. But to, to kind of open it up and expand it like this. I like the hands there. One thing I was not, I remember knocking was I thought he got his hands out late. Let me see this one. Now nah, he got his hands out at a really good time here. I feel like I feel like he got his hands out early enough on this one. You can see he's got his hands ready. Gets the football. Big hands on the football, man. His hands look huge on the football there. Some music to this. I'm not gonna play it because I'm assuming it's copyright. I don't know for sure. So we got some hype here going on. I like it. You got the cinematics. We got him running through the pads. Okay, okay. What we got here first? Bop. Oh yeah, that was a touchdown. That was. Was that Justin Jackson? I, I feel like that was Justin Jackson. To see the success on the wheel route. And I think the big thing is we when we've had to kind of touch the wheel routes, we've had limited success over the last couple of years from what I've seen. These, um, you know, the ones that we've had success on, the one that Gibbs yesterday, which I didn't show here, and then, you know, like this one, it was a little bit more of kind of a straight shot. This one had a little bit loft to it, kind of over Campbell. You can see how athletic Campbell is, run that down. One thing I was saying when we were watching uh, with Jack Campbell, I bet I forgot this was still going, but like Jack Campbell's never on the ground. And I remember we did the video breaking down Jack Campbell and the flexibility and how he doesn't miss a lot of tackles, the way he breaks down, doesn't overrun sacks, that kind of thing, which is like, this is pretty awesome. He never really is on the ground. I remember the first play that I remember, you know, bringing up where it was like he ran out there in coverage, slipped, fell, that kind of thing. But in terms of like making a tackle, breaking down into a tackle, he's got a really weird flexibility about him to just not be on the ground often, which is really cool. It speaks to a lot of athleticism that he has. Who is this here? Oh my gosh. Who is... Oh, that's Denzel. So this is Denzel Mims here. This is nasty. Oh, my. Hey, speaking of. So look, look. Jack, bro. So, okay. Wow. I don't know how that happened. Jack Campbell, right? Now, hey, this would be a missed tackle because it's a nasty move. Oh, my goodness. Hey, stop. Okay, that's disgusting. But the big thing here is that look at Jack Campbell stay on his feet. So he flies by using his hand. He doesn't ever go on the ground. He has that crazy flexibility. He's back on the tackle. Like, that. you saw that a lot back at Iowa, that kind of thing. But this is nasty. Bop, plant. Ooh, that was disgusting. And then go back up field. That was nice. That was nice. Shot to CJ being over top there. And then the fact that he's able to stay on his feet and get back at this place should not happen. Should not happen, man. Who is this? Oh, that's Dylan Drummond. So, like I said, he's scoring touchdowns when he's catching the football. This was a slant, I think. That was, Yeah, this was a slant. He was wide open on this play. I don't remember what was going on, but I just remember he was wide open. Like, that was a kind of an easy one. But it was a nice touchdown. You know, nevertheless, a nice touchdown. That was uh, Jameer Gibbs breaking out there on that play. It was right here. That's Will Harris. And... Ooh, nice little stiff arm. Okay, you kind of see that, that lateral juice. You know what I'm saying? Bop, plant, go. That's going to be difficult, man. That's going to be difficult because you can see, like, Will Harris setting that edge kind of like, okay, I'm going to kind of line this, align this tackle. And then for him to, like, just plant, get lateral with that burst, and just roll, yeah, that shiftiness is going to be tough when he breaks the edge. Now, they've given some inside zone runs because, like I said, a lot of the runs have been inside. But uh, the draws I like inside, but I, I really think he's going to be – utilized in his outside and stretch zone running that kind of thing when we do zone running type of plays here but yeah that's gonna be difficult to set an edge against that dude here was a look like a little bit of pressure there is that my man romeo in there getting some heat you like to see that probably a either an obvious pass down or probably a stunt because he's working on looks like he's working on a guard on that play looks like he's working on jonah on that play and then Oh, that oh that one was sick. Oh, if you don't remember what I said about this one, I was like, if you want to think like snag in your mind, like what does snag mean? Like what's the perfect example of a perfect like pass catching snag? It's this. This is the play I was talking about. Oh my good, what the yo? <laughs> and and it was disgusting, bro. Now look, the defender's on the outside. 
So if this makes me think I got so many plays that come to mind. You think back to when we played the Rams two years ago and the big play that Kali Freeman hit the drag. And I think he was, it may have been against zone, but he hit the, I think it was linebacker was sitting outside leverage on Khalif and he put it like away from him on the outside. Khalif caught it, took off for a huge gain. That's kind of what this was. It was also, I guess, kind of like the Pro Bowl play, if you remember, where Hawkinson from Goff kind of just threw it into a little hole. Maybe this one's a little bit closer to that, but the defender sitting on the outside hip and in these tight windows down and away that thing is down and away man that's only where his man's gonna get that thing in a tight window that thing is down and away so maybe a little wobbly but it's down and away and then you just need to have an elite pass catcher that's like yeah you know what i might catch that thing i might just have to <laughs> it's disgusting that's on chase lucas that's disgusting look chase is like what the heck just happened to we got some more augusture let's go through a few more of these so this is oh, a lot of those curl routes, a lot of those hitches just sitting down in zones, especially against like a, a veteran. I'm, we got some young dudes in there, but there's some vets in the back end. Uh, it looks like Jack Campbell was blitzing on this play, or maybe he had the, the running back, maybe something like that. It looks like he was blitzing, though. But there was some heat. You know, you could just feel the pressure. He wasn't hit on this play. But to just put that ball out there that quickly, zone hole, just get it out immediately, probably a blitz, which is probably why Alex Anzalone was late because he had to cover more ground underneath. So you just kind of leave it out there in a spot and St. Brown just finds it. Like, oh, okay, this window's open. Just I'm just going to lay it up there for you. But the ball was in good placement there. Catch, tuck, take off. Oh, they got the Sam Laporta on here, dog. They just doing work, man. Okay, hold up. This was the play I brought up, and I was like, okay, it was like a little bit behind, but it was a nasty catch because Laporta, like, contorted his body. <laughs> Stop. Yo, you want to talk about flexibility of a tight end? This is why Laporta's different. It's the same reason that he... To me, it's a big reason that he has to make you miss that he has because he's so loose for a tight end, so so agile for a tight end in terms of that flexibility in his body. It's things like this that should not happen with a tight end. Not It shouldn't look like that. And things are happening really fast here. Finds his own hole, like I said. So it looks like, if you can tell on this play, uh, we have Malcolm Rodriguez here underneath in zone. He kind of gives Sam Laporta off to i believe that's an edge rusher romeo who dropped in zone yep so romeo drops in zone we've seen a lot of that as i touched on so malcolm's playing out into the slot romeo drops and golf feels that and puts that between romeo and malcolm as soon as malcolm as soon as he basically gets to Malcolm, he's laying that thing in the middle of the hole. That's something you could try to take advantage of. We've seen that, like the edge rushers, they can drop in a spot, but are they athletic enough to actually make a play? James Houston's shown some of that. I mean, hey, credit them for being able to move around and play their area. Julian had to pick, but they're still not as, they usually don't have the movement skills like a normal off-ball linebacker would. But even then, like he, you're dropping, right? So if you're dropping as an edge, if you're not just aligning there and you're being asked, like it looks like from his spot, he drops out to the zone. If you're not just sitting there pre-snap and you're asked to drop, you're being asked to you're asking the edge to drop back, read that he's passing it to you and react to make a play. That's way different than sitting there in my opinion. That's way different than sitting there seeing him passing to me and then diving on it. Like I got to backpedal, sit down and then go because we're dis we're disguising it. It's not that I'm relining Romeo to off ball and having him sit there. You're disguising it and he's dropping. So that's just a lot to ask. And again, hit the window. I mean, this catch is ridiculous. I like how he's getting his hands ready for this one, though. Oh, my goodness. I almost would think that Goff kind of recognized probably the edge dropping out and then said, okay, there's going to be that zone hole. So I see Malcolm flow into the slot. As soon as he hit Malcolm, I'm just laying it up there. If anything, you could say, well, hey, Laporta, kind of sit down in that zone hole instead of running through it because Goff's got to hit spots instead of hitting you necessarily. But the fact that he was able to catch this, contort himself, and then continue to run after the catch, hey, man, if you can do it, do it, I he's guess. He's catching the top of the ball a little bit. Um, I think that's how he had some drops. So it's just about, I think the main thing here is you got, you're going to have to watch that because the ball can get kind of like through his hands a little bit, but, but yeah, no, that was disgusting. Yeah, that was, that was clean. The Derek Barnes play that he forced the interception. So it looks confirmed that, yeah, you can see he's running up the seam with the tight end as I touched on. I think it was like a Tampa two type of look, something similar to that. So he's running the seam because he's in good position there. He's not grabbing playing right to the receiver's hands and that's something like you could say like with the brian branch play almost like hey don't even turn your eyes back right now you do because he's kind of working his way back to ball so you're like i'm gonna go find it but it's one of these things and that's good timing but it's one of these things like for Derek barnes it's like dude don't even turn your eyes back just play right through the ball you know what i mean like don't even turn your eyes back play right through the ball vertical he does this so well he's very natural at doing this getting his hands in there that was thrown to laporta and if you look there really wasn't much of a window there. I remember Goff throwing this. There really wasn't much of a window. Like, this is not going to be caught. That's going to be very difficult to catch. 
but you're attacking the linebacker, and that's really shouldn't be open, I guess, hypothetically, it shouldn't be open, but uh, if your linebacker can't do it, uh, then yeah, you can make a great play here if you're a tight end, because there is the hole between the safeties, right, that's the thing, it's like the Tampa 2 is taking away the middle field, which, you know, normally that's not taken away, because you're in a cover 2 look, normally middle field can be opened up, especially if you, you know, get something to the sidelines, you can kind of pull those safeties open a little bit, but in this case, you know, the safeties are going to be open. That linebacker's got to be able to get in there. And uh, one thing with CJ, and in this play was 23, so that would be Savion Smith again. So shout out to Savion Smith. Like, CJ doesn't just bite to bite. Like, he'll play through the quarterback's eyes. So I'm going to assume there wasn't as much of a window here. For if he was out on the field, there's Tracy. Like, Tracy's diving on this, too. But underneath this, like, Tracy was almost diving to, like, make a play on the football underneath. Um, so he's not really over top of this to make a play. But he's diving on it to hit it. So he didn't really give a lot of space here either. Probably just reading through the quarterback. But look at this, man. He's trying to pull that thing in there. And Derek Barnes just, nope. Just with, with this one, because I didn't actually see this one. I, this was the practice I wasn't at. It's the one I missed. Um, and uh, this was the bomb to Jamison Williams. Yeah, the space is ridiculous. Now, again, you, you don't really get to see how that space was created. Right? But you can see that he, well, you know, you can see here it's kind of even. And then all of a sudden it's not. <laughs> Now, that's one thing with Sutton. Now, okay, let's be fair here. J-Mo's ridiculously fast. You pile on top of that, Sutton is not that fast in straight line. Like, he's not, and that's why I thought originally, I was like, man, he might be playing slot for us. I think in spots, if you have help over top, if you're matchup aware, those kind of things, he can stick on the outside. But if you put him on an island, and he's not playing off coverage, and he's matched up on a dude like this, these are the things that can't happen because he doesn't have necessarily that kind of outside elite speed to just sit on an island like that. And you can see it on this play. Like, things are kind of, I mean, they're not even. He has a step, so pretty much it's, it's kind of a wrap. But they're not, I mean, he's probably a foot behind. He's probably a step back, which is not great. And there, But there's no way he's recovering on this play. Like, there's absolutely no shot of recovery. Not without safety help. There's no shot that he's going to recover. And it looks like, Kirby, oh, no, that was CJ playing middle field there. Very fast win. Because CJ's not really in a spot. And you can see his eyes are already looking there. This had to be pretty quickly how fast he burned him off the line. Because CJ's not really in a position to make a play on this football. Like, you would you would probably want some help. I don't know what coverage they're in. It almost looks like a cover one or cover three. It's one of the two. He's not really in a spot to help him on, that, on this play very much. So he doesn't have, like, that direct safety help. It's almost like you're trying to force it back inside. He's sitting on the outside hip. He's sitting outside leverage. You want to squeeze that back inside. But j is running by him. Then he works back inside to the ball, and there's just a, way too much space here. And, yeah, j is just ridiculously fast. Yeah, I don't know. Is this me? I... Hold up. Nah, see, I don't know, man. I don't know what I was I think that might be me. I think that is me, dog. Wait, hold up. <laughs> Some other dude's like, that's me, man. I think this is me. I don't know for sure, but I think that's me right there. I think it is. I don't know. It might be. Because you see what I'm saying, like, by the technique I'm sitting with? Where am I at? I lost myself. I lost myself. Um, yeah, no, the technique, right? So I have my phone in my right hand. Me, I think that's me, dog. I don't know. Anyway, that was cool. If you guys want to see me do another one of these, man, let me know. I think that was pretty cool to just kind of get a different view of, uh, you know, some of these plays, man. I think that was cool. So let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.